Welcome back to Strange Stories of the Seeker and the Skeptic. Today we have probably a pretty short episode. Um, Jonathan and I have been very busy with getting ourselves ready to move. We just spent a week in New York at my grandmother's house, which we will be moving into. And we wanted to come on and just tell you about some of the strange things that happened while we were there. So... I've lived in my grandmother's house before and um, the room that I used to stay in when I, I was taking care of her and living with her was my grandfather's room. So at a certain point, my grandparents stopped sharing a room together as some couples do. And um, he passed away, I think it was 2008. So like I said, for about a year, I lived in that room and I would often feel him around me. Like I would feel him kind of like just like his energy or sometimes like I'd feel him like tugging on my hair a little bit, just like getting my attention. Um. So the first night that Jonathan and I were there, I saw a shadow figure walking out of that room into the hallway and it was just very quick, but I was like, oh, like there was definitely like a figure, a shadow figure there. So that was the first thing that I experienced. Um, and then Jonathan, what did you experience while we were there? Yeah. Well, uh, just to kind of set the the scene a, a little bit. Uh, this is a house that's been unoccupied for about a year and a half. So um, basically, you know, previous to that, you know, her grandparents had lived there for. 50 years so there's you know a lot of stuff to, to do um a lot of what we've been doing for the past week has been uh moving furniture moving belongings finding out figuring out what to donate what to throw away so we're going in and out of the house a lot over this week and uh the day after we got there so that i guess that was, would have been last uh last sunday uh because we, we we went on last saturday um i was i had went and taken some things out to the dumpster we rented and came back into the house. I was going back towards the back of the house. And as I walked past the kitchen, I saw um, a guy, uh, an, an older, short, stockier gentleman, um, out, of, out of just out of my peripheral vision, just out of the corner of my eye. Uh, I could tell that he was standing there looking at me and I got this this feeling of just being bemused, like this is curiosity almost. Uh, and that was that was Tuesday, uh, just standing there beside the the refrigerator, just kind of looking. Um, a couple of days later, early in the morning, I got up and started making breakfast, and looking, you know, I was chopping garlic, paying attention to that, you know, just getting garlic chopped for breakfast. And out of the corner of my eye in the dining room, because there's a connected you know, dining room kitchen area, I saw what looked like the same figure. Again, just kind of looking at me. It's, it's kind of got this this, you know, vibe is not a great word, but I don't know that we have a better word for it. Just this kind of like this sense of just curiosity. Yeah, you didn't tell me about the second one. You told me about standing in the kitchen, but um, <laughs> I I find it funny that it's like a curiosity. My initial instinct is like, oh no, Grandpa's pissed. We're throwing all of his stuff out <laughs> because <laughs> we're definitely we got a dumpster and we we're definitely throwing away a lot of things. Um, my grandparents come from a generation where you did not throw anything away ever. And they did not. <laughs> so there's a lot of things that we are not keeping because, I mean, one of the things we found was 30-year-old canned tomatoes. <laughs> not sure why we needed to keep that, but they are now in the dumpster. So I'm glad that he's curious and not angry that we're getting rid of all of his treasures. Yeah, and absolutely. Then... There wasn't. There was another thing. Yeah. What was the other thing? The well, you can talk about that. It's, I think you you experienced it more than I did. I was kind of peripheral on that. 
Okay, so there was a night where I was in bed, kind of like falling asleep, and Jonathan was still out in the living room, and like I was like kind of in and out of like that that state, like right before you're falling asleep, but I kept hearing something in my mind, and it was a very strange sound, and it it kind of felt like it was my brain tuning into a certain frequency. And it was like kind of coming in and out. And it kind of like sounded like this weird, like almost moaning sound. And then all of a sudden it wasn't in my brain anymore. We both physically heard it from different areas of the house. If we were in different rooms and that, and I don't know if moaning is the best way to describe it, but it's the only, only way I, that I can really think of describing like what that sound was like that we both heard yeah it was just like a, an atonal vocalization it didn't it didn't sound like an animal that i can think of it, it didn't sound like it was like you know any kind of technology like it wasn't like any kind of a beeping sound or anything it was it, was, it wasn't definitely wasn't speech for sure like it wasn't there were no words but it's just like a, a half second of just something yeah it was something. very strange i mean hearing it like and that we both heard it that was strange but to me the weirder part was i was hearing it in my mind first before i heard it with my ears so yeah. that i've never had something like that happen to me before that was very strange and not really entirely sure what to make of that one yeah, I definitely have not experienced that or, or I think heard of that before. So maybe somebody will know what we're talking about and reach out once they hear this and be like, actually, it's such and such. Yeah. And then I think there was just one more kind of strange thing that happened. So as we were leaving, I walk out into the garage and all I can smell is my grandmother's meatballs and grandma made sunday dinners my entire childhood every single sunday meatballs spaghetti sauce the whole shebang and it just the entire garage smelled like that and jonathan walked in and he could smell it as well and I, I'm not sure what to make of that one. I mean, there was definitely nobody cooking meatballs or anything. You know, we were getting ready to leave, right? Yeah, yeah, we were, yeah. We we're, we're, we're finishing up packing up the car just a couple of days ago on Saturday, and uh, you you were in you were in the garage and you were like, "Whoa!" or something like that. And I walked through the garage. And I'm like, "Why do I smell garlic and beef?" I'm like. <laughs> spaghetti sauce yeah. Yeah. and you're and, and and you're like well that this is exactly the smell of my grandmother's meatballs and we just kind of stood there for a couple of minutes just real quiet like and i feel like i, I feel like i'm kind of being pranked a little bit uh by by something because you know you know multiple episodes the first part of this podcast i kind of made fun of people who you know who smell things that aren't there you know the yeah, and now here we are. <laughs> so and that that's not the first time I've smelled something that wasn't there. Um, after my other grandmother had passed away, my my dad's mom, um, I came home from school one day, and the entire I was nobody else was home. It was just me, and the entire house smelled like her perfume. So I mean, I have had that happen before. Um. But yeah, I wasn't expecting to smell grandma's meatballs, which have not been made in probably 15 years. But it just was like no denying. Like, that's what it smelled like. Yeah. And so I told my my family and my dad's like, yeah, it's probably grandpa just letting you know <laughs> that he's there because he loved your grandmother's meatballs. And that is very true. He certainly did. Yeah, it's, it's super interesting to me. But, you know, she she apparently hasn't made that in years and years, but she is still with us. Like, she has not passed away. Yeah. So, like... You know, she's, you know, we, we saw her a week ago, you know, um, so that clearly has nothing. It's not her directly. But uh, I, I 
have thought for a very long time that a lot of the things that we consider as you know that humans consider to be ghosts or apparitions or whatever are like kind of like a psychic imprint of things that happened in a place and if she you know you you're saying she did that every single sunday for decades right mm-hmm. so oh, yeah. like that that is something that is psychically impressed on that house possibly that that's you know that's a, a thing it's you know positive probably you know yeah memories for a bunch of people and you know the, i think things kind of get ingrained in places maybe and and you know that's just a theory that i have you know yeah it definitely could be who who knows there's a lot of different things that it could be but that was that was definitely interesting and when i came home so I'm reading a book and we're going to be actually interviewing the author in an upcoming episode. So I'm reading her book. She's a psychic medium. And she talked about um, like doing an investigation and how there was like a, a room where there was like two mirrors facing each other and how that can create like really weird things. Some people say it like opens portals. Some people say it just creates weird energetic vibrations but in my grandmother's room there are two f- mirrors facing each other and mm. that will change <laughs> as soon as we can get that furniture moved but i'm you know that just had me like i'm like huh i hadn't heard that before about the two mirrors facing each other i do have a little bit of a weirdness around mirrors um and i'm hoping my friend meg will help me uh feel a little bit more comfortable with mirrors because she has kind of a different belief system around that um like I have a mirror in my office right now that's covered up because it just gives me weird feelings and I don't know maybe there's something there too who who knows there's there's lots of strange strange things that could be going on in that house but doesn't feel negative there's you know I, I mean to me anyways I, I don't have any like negative feelings about what's going on there. You know, I None do feel like, you know, I do feel like my grandfather's presence is definitely there, you know, and maybe there's other things going on as well, but it's going to be interesting. That's for sure. I had not heard the, the mirror mirrors facing each other thing before, but you know, one of the places that, you know, I lived growing up, my parents definitely had, mirrors like that in our living room because it, it, it gives the illusion people do that because it gives the illusion of having more space than you have yeah you know it makes the room feel bigger and that is a, that's an optical illusion that is real like the thing that that you know we, we do as humans feel that way but i mean there was a lot of you know poltergeist style activity in my house when I'm, you know my brothers and i were kids and there's a lot of researchers who who talk about how you know you're more likely to have that when there are kids in the house, you know, the, that energy for ki- from kids can manifest in weird ways. And, I mean, maybe that was amplified by by that. I don't know. I'm looking forward to reading that book myself. Yeah. It's a, a very quick part of that book, but I was just like, <clears throat> I read it last night. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Because there's definitely in that bedroom two mirrors that are facing each other. So that's true. I would definitely like to learn more about mirrors and mirror magic. And I can't remember the name of the thing that Meg made me. Hexenspiegel. Hexenspiegel. Yes. Yes. So it's like a a mirror on a piece of jewelry and it's supposed to kind of reflect back other people's energy, which for an empath, it's a beautiful thing. And so I love the necklace that my friend Meg made me. Um, it's it's awesome so definitely want to look at positive ways of using mirrors you know good short short one today you know with with the us coming back from eight days of, of heavy lifting and and just trying to get get that house ready and get our house ready to move you know it's just gonna have to be a short update this time um that being said folks uh you know always looking for more people to talk about have interesting conversations if you experience a weird thing have a weird theory um just like strange stuff and want to talk about it on a podcast hit us up we're easy to find we always respond to everything absolutely and we will keep you up to date about any weird things that happen in that house as we as we move into it and as we're going forward so 
for sure. Hopefully there will be other fun stories we can share with you guys. All right, guys, take care. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for being here. If you have a strange story you want to share with us, email us at seekerandskeptic at gmail.com. We look forward to talking to you soon. 